Hi, I'm Dr. Avni Engley with Northwest ENT and Associates, and we're here to discuss tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy for your child. The most common reason for removal of tonsils and adenoids in your child is loud snoring with occasional pauses at night. This can be related to sleep apnea, but is more commonly described as sleep disordered breathing. Your child may have enlarged tonsils and enlarged adenoids. Adenoids are located in the back of the nose and are often difficult to see in a young child. Based on the symptoms your child is having, we can ascertain that the adenoids are indeed enlarged. Tonsils are seen in the back of the mouth and can become swollen recurrently with various kinds of infections. If your child is snoring and having pauses along with daytime hyperactivity or sluggishness in the morning upon awakening, he or she may benefit from tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. Other reasons for this surgery include chronic infection, recurrent cases of strep throat or tonsillitis, or chronic runny nose, postnasal drip, and recurrent cough or other reasons for removal of the tonsils and adenoids. On the day of surgery, you will arrive at the surgery center with your child. In the preoperative area, your child will change clothes into one of the operating room gowns, and then you will meet with the nurses and the anesthesiologist. At that point, your child, if they're young, will just get an ox a sample oxygen mask to play with prior to going to the operating room. Once they arrive in the OR, they will be put to sleep with anesthetic gas and oxygen, after which an IV will be placed. Again, your child will be fully asleep when the IV is placed. Tonsils and adenoids are removed using specialized equipment, typically electrocautery. However, this may vary based on surgeon preference. After the surgery is complete, the breathing tube will be removed and your patient will go to the recovery room. As soon as your child is awake, you will join your child in the recovery room. They will be given pain medicines and some liquids to drink. Once they are awake enough and able to drink and comfortable, you will be discharged home. Upon arrival at home, it is, it is important to keep your child comfortable. You will give them pain medicines at the, regu at the recommended interval and keep them very well hydrated. Your child may eat or drink whatever he or she may choose. The typical post-tonsillectomy diet includes things like popsicles, ice creams, and soups. Soft things are often preferred, however, there are no limitations on what your child can eat or drink after surgery. The major risks of tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy are as follows. The most concerning complication is bleeding after surgery. If your child has a small amount of bleeding that stops quickly, then that is okay. However, if bleeding continues or you become concerned, call the office immediately. Oftentimes, bleeding occurs a day or so after surgery or in seven to 10 days when the scabs begin to fall off. Most bleeding can be controlled without a visit to the operating room, but in about 1%, they do require a trip to the operating room to stop the bleeding. Other risks include injury to the lips, teeth, or gums. That occurs in less than 1% of patients. You also may notice a minor change in your child's voice after tonsillectomy. This is due to the adenoid tissue being gone and they may have a less nasal sound to their voice. For a brief period of time after surgery, your child may have liquids come through their nose when they swallow. This is a consequence of swelling that occurs after surgery and is most often a temporary side effect. Occasionally after tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy, your child may have a low-grade fever. If temperatures are above 101.5, you should call your doctor for further recommendations. This video is presented for general information purposes only. No attempt is made to include all significant risks and benefits of surgical procedure and may not apply to a particular patient. Review with your physician any questions before signing the informed consent form.